Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I open the mailbag and answer your questions, so please keep watching for more. Hi, Michael, kb 9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Welcome to the new year. Not only that, but it's a new decade too. You know, and as I look, kind of look back on the last uh, 10 years, I see a couple, I saw a couple of big trends that I really came about in, uh, in the amateur radio world. Now, first off was the um, continued growth of digital technology in amateur radio. Uh, especially in the VHF, UHF bands. Back in uh, 2009, uh, we had D-Star, which was, was, was thought to be, the, at that time, the, the preeminent digital mode. Uh, but um, move ahead 10 years, and we saw the proliferation of Yaesu System Fusion and the open source uh, DMR, that, uh, or digital mobile radio, that really kind of um, Put some pressure on D-Star, and um, now we've got three great digital modes in order to um, pick and choose. All three have a, have a beautiful array of features. Um, it'll be interesting in the years to come to see um, if any if these all kind of um, coalesce into one one digital mode to rule them all. In that same vein, um, FT8 has really breathed new life into um, weak signal digital operation. Um, so much so that it was the dominant mode a couple of years ago in the ARRL's um, year-long grid square hunt. And uh, to this day, it um, exerts a lot of pressure on some of the other uh, digital HF modes for um, spectrum on the HF bands. Um, but you know, since the last, uh, the latter half of this decade was marked by the declining solar cycle, you know, this, ac this uh, increased activity has really been welcome in um, keeping you know, the bands busy and alive. Another big trend that has really shaped amateur radio is the prevalence of the cheap direct conversion receiver. This, is, this technology is certainly going to shape uh, amateur radio you know, for the next decade to come. So looking forward, um, it's going to be interesting to see you know, what the next decade will bring us. But you know, if you have any um, prognostication, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'd like to hear what other people think is going to happen in the next 10 years. But enough of that, let's move on to the questions. So my recent video asking if um, a Baofeng is a good ST SHTF uh, radio has certainly hit a nerve. I know I knew that was going to be a controversial subject, and um, you know, but I wanted to open up the discussion because I think you know we can do better as emergency communicators if we take a critical look at our tools and methods. In that vein, you know, there were a lot of great positive comments, but there were also some comments that were you know critical to my thesis, and I'm fine with that. You know, if if you haven't seen the video, you know, I recommend watching it. Um, you can find a link in the video description below. I'll also pop it up here in the, in the upper corner of the screen. Starting off, I'm going to dive head first uh, with this comment from Mike. You just wanted to hit the hornet's nest with a stick. Your analogy of these radios is completely off base. In SHTF conditions, who gives a damn about frequency bleed over? Uh, you're thinking like a ham snob and not a person looking for a cheap radio to hear um, no weather broadcasts and FM commercial radio. You gripe about the ability for them to operate outside the ham bands. Who cares? The ability to monitor fire, police, and rescue is a fantastic addition. And the comment continues on, but you get the point. Now Mike makes some, you know, he, he makes some points here, but also presents a bunch of stuff that kind of needs to be unpacked. You know, I'm sorry that I came off to you as a Baofeng hater. You know, ev evidently that's a common, you know, gut response to uh, when anybody points out the shortcomings of these inexpensive radios. And I'm fine, I'm really fine with the day-to-day -day operation and use of them uh, as these radios, you know, the little, the inexpensive Baofeng is a, you know, a great introduction to amateur radio for those just starting out. But, you know, if you're going to be moving into the realm of emergency and disaster communications, then their serious shortcomings become, you know, especially evident. And I believe that a total, you know, SHTF grid down into the world, uh, zombie apocalypse type scenario where a civil society breaks down is very highly unlikely. But, you know, I'm very concerned about local and regional disasters such as tornadoes, floods, fires, hurricanes, etc. In these situations, local communications infrastructure can be damaged and more robust methods 
like higher powered VHF, UHF, and HF communications become a necessity. If infrastructure is available, I'm fine with utilizing handheld radios, but I also believe that users of handhelds are putting too much reliance in them and need to think of more um, holistic solutions. That's why I stress the importance of HF for local and regional communications. For many people, you know, preparing for SHTF, you know, communications are an afterthought, and I see recommending these inexpensive radios can be a disservice to them. In this video, in, in, in that video, I provided an out-of-the-box solution using HF and um, NVIS style antennas. Now we don't need more videos on why Baofengs are good radios. Now, there's plenty of those out there if you want to watch them. I think we need to be more critical. Criticism is how we learn and grow. I also think we need to understand that these handhelds have their place and we need to think about how we communicate, not only to next door, but also to the next town, county, and state. Moving on, you know, a common response to this video was echoed by Lee. Good starter radio to see if you want to go further into the hobby. But once you're in the hobby and want to continue, then it becomes a radio for the collection. Not my choice, but everyone has to work on a budget, so good radio if you have other priorities. It's better than nothing. Yes, I suppose it's better than nothing. The inexpensive Chinese radios are a great introduction to the hobby, as you don't have to have much invested in them. But as you grow and learn, and if you have an interest in emergency communications, I think it's prudent to move away from them into more robust radio systems. So what if you still want a handheld radio, but you also want to move away from the Baofeng? Well, Aiden suggests the Yaesu FT4XR is much more rugged and not much more expensive. And Carlos um, echoes the same thing. I agree with your comments. A better option would be the Yaesu FT4XR, currently selling for around $70. And I know I sound like a Yaesu fanboy sometimes, but you know, they also have done a great job at providing radios at price points that meet the needs of the hams on a budget. If you wanted to save money, you could also look at, you know, some of the other brands out there like Anytone, TYT, or Osheng. Uh, those models all passed uh, the ARL's recent survey of handheld radios for spurious emissions, so those will all be good choices too. You know, the biggest hang-up I have with the Baofeng handhelds is the quality control and its ability to generate spurious emissions while transmitting. Many commenters felt this wasn't a problem, as highlighted by Rescue Painter's comment. Well, if the stuff hits the fan, why do I care about spurious emissions? Hasanasi says the same thing. Interesting points. I can't say I agree with them all, but you know, your points are well thought out. You're right about spectrum purity with the Baofeng, but yeah, I don't think it's a deciding factor in SHTF. I thought about the spectral purity issue quite a bit, and I believe it is a big limitation to the capabilities of Baofeng radios. Of that, I say there's two reasons uh, why we need to be concerned. First off, spurious emissions are a sign that your radio is not operating at its best, affecting its overall range and performance. And second, a dirty signal affects other nearby radio services, which degrades everyone's ability to communicate. You may feel that during an SHTF event that other radio signals may not be around as infrastructure may be down or disabled, but you know, I say the opposite's gonna happen. If there's an emergency or a disaster, public safety agencies, amateurs, and others will be active and on the air you will most likely hear more radio traffic and experience congestion, especially in disaster zones. A well-designed transceiver will have the filtering necessary to avoid front-end overload and produce a cleaner signal. Radios that conform to specifications are important as it assures the user that the radio will play well with others on adjacent radio services. In an emergency situation, that becomes critical. Now, I've participated in disaster drills and the like, and during the debrief, the top, the top most item brought up is the proliferation of so many radios in a small area hinders the ability for everybody to communicate. And as a non-conforming radio, this just makes it worse. Finally, to close out the questions, uh, John says, you know, excellent points, Michael. Uh, one contribution from me, uh, AB3ZI, the AMRON, or American Readout Radio Operators Network, does promote a Channel 3 protocol project, which involves use or monitoring of FRS, GMRS, MURS, and CB Channel 3 for disaster communications. HAMs are encouraged to interoperate on those channels in order to relay traffic to and from amateur radio allocations. 
That's a great idea. Thanks for sharing. And I think if we're going to be successful as um, emergency communicators, we need to be able to interface with others and on other radio services. You know, monitoring those channels, uh, personal radio service channels for emergency traffic, will provide utility to those radio services. And who knows, you know, maybe our interaction will, with them will bring others into the amateur radio field. Well, that's it for this month's questions. I'm going to get off my high horse for a while and um, we'll, we'll kind of look, look at some other topics on January. So here's what's coming up for the next month. I had a viewer request on how to use APRS on IESU's new uh, FT3DR handheld radio. So we'll take a look at that in uh, the coming of uh, this month. And towards the end of the month is Winter Field Day. Uh, Joe and I are working on a couple of surprises. Uh, so you're going to want to uh, watch for those uh, around Winter Field Day time. And of course, if there's a topic that you'd love to uh, see or hear, uh, leave it in the comments below and um, I'll see what I'll add it to the list. But that's it for this month's questions. Uh, please keep them coming. Uh, leave your comments below. I'll filter through them and we'll keep that conversation going online. Yeah, and may, who knows, maybe one of your questions will show up in my next uh, Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So give me that big thumbs up. Uh, check out some of the recommended videos alongside me here. And also hit that subscribe button and press the little bell notification. Uh, clicking subscribe is your way to be notified when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, keeping an eye on VBR. Have a great day and 73.